Dasya Gyananjana Chalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Asmai Sri Gurabe Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Ye Nabhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Sri Guru Sri Jutapatakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahakana Ragunathan Bitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamscha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Opesha Gopika Kanda Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Brindabaneshwari Brishabhanu Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Banshakal Patarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Atitanam Bhavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasadi Gaura Bhakta Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna I am sincerely honored, grateful, and very happy to be with all of you today in the presence of Nitai Gorachandra, Shishi Radha Gopinath, and Sri Gopalji, and all of their assembled devotees. It is certainly a miracle of Srila Prabhupada on every imaginable level that we can be together today to celebrate the appearance of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Where I am, it is nine o'clock at night and it is Gaur Purnima here in the USA. And where you are, we have just greeted the deities in the morning in Mumbai. I'd like to begin by reading the invocations to Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita by Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. 
Bande Gurum Isha Bhaktam Isham Ishavatarakam Tat Prakasham Shtatakti Krishna Chaitanya Samgyatam I offer my respectful obeisances unto the spiritual masters, the devotees of the Lord, the Lord's incarnations, his plenary portions, his energies, and the primeval Lord himself, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Bande Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Nityanando Sahodado, Gododaye Pushpabanto, Chitro Sando Tamonado. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Sri Krishna Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, who are like the sun and moon. They have arisen simultaneously on the horizon of Goda to dissipate the darkness of ignorance and thus wonderfully bestow benediction upon all. Yaradoitam Brahmo Parishadi Tat Apyasya Tanu Pa Ya Atmantar Yami Purusha Iti So Syangshavi Pavaha Saraishwara Yara Puno Ya Iha Bhagabansa Swayam Ayam Na Chaitanya Krishna Jagati Paratatvam Param Iha What the Upanishads describe as the impersonal Brahman is but the effulgence of his body. And the Lord, known as the super soul, is but his localized plenary portion. Lord Chaitanya is the supreme personality of Godhead, Krishna himself, full with six opulences. He is the absolute truth and no other truth is greater than or equal to him. Anarapita Anarapita cha manchirat karunavatarnak kalo samarpaitam unutojvala rasamsva bhakti shriyam haripurata sundara duti kadamba sandipata sadahridaya kandare spuratuva sachinandana. May the Supreme Lord, who is known as the son of Srimati Sachi Devi, be transcendentally situated in the innermost chambers of your heart, resplendent with the radiance of molten gold. He has appeared in the age of Kali by his causeless mercy to bestow what no incarnation has ever offered before the most sublime and radiant mellow of devotional service, the mellow of conjugal love. Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikratil Hadini Shakti Rasmat Ekat Manava Pibu Vipura Dehabitam Katao Tao Chetan Yakyam Prakatam Adunatadvayam Chekyam Aptam Radha Bhava Duti Suvalitam Nomi Krishna Swarupam. The loving affairs of Sri Radha and Krishna are transcendental manifestations of the Lord's internal pleasure giving potency. Although Radha and Krishna are one in their identity, they separated themselves eternally. Now these two transcendental identities have again united in the form of Sri Krishna Chaitanya. I bow down to him who has manifested himself with the sentiment and complexion of Srimati Radharani, although he is Krishna himself. Sri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidriso Vanayaeva Swadyo yena bhuta madhurima kidrasova madhya. Sokyam chasya madanubabata kidrisam veti lobhat. 
Tadbhavadhyasamajani Sachigarabhasindho Harindu. Desiring to understand the glory of Radharani's love, the wonderful qualities in him that she alone relishes to her love, and the happiness she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love. The Supreme Lord Hari, richly endowed with her emotions, appeared from the womb of Srimati Sachi Devi as the moon appeared from the ocean. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Prisharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Vastitya Deshadarine I was saying that today, where I am in the United States, it is March 6th, and we are celebrating Gaur Purnima today. And where I am virtually with all of you, and of course, where my heart is, at Radha Gopinath Temple, it is March 7th, and we are celebrating Gaur Purnima. I would like to read what Srila Prabhupada wrote in his diary in 1966 on these two days of March 6th and March 7th. At this time, Srila Prabhupada is in New York City. He had no followers. All of his plans to engage the people of India who were devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to help him, they were all unsuccessful, apparently. He was living alone with really, from a material perspective, no hope of his success. This is before 26 Southkin Avenue, before there was an ISKCON before he had a single follower in the West. In one place, he wrote that he was, he was wandering like a hopeless vagabond in a foreign country. On March 6th, he wrote this in his diary. According to Mayapur Panjika, Today is the Adivas day of Gaur Purnima. Devotees in Brindaban and Navadweep are enjoying the celebration. I am here alone without any devotee companion. But I have come here to serve the Lord and not for personal happiness. I am prepared to live in hell. I am prepared to live in hell even if I am able to serve the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted that his mission should be propagated all over the world 
and that is my objective. I do not mind the inconvenience personally felt. On Monday, March 7th, Ratipat in the evening, Lord Chaitanya's birthday. Fasting observed till 5.30 p.m. Broke fast by eating fruits and milk. Then he writes, Seven ladies and gentlemen attended today's meeting. There was topics of Gita and Kirtan. In Srila Prabhupada Lila Amrita, His Holiness Satsvarup Goswami Maharaj um, cites a description of Srila Prabhupada when he was living as a student in the Scottish Church's college in Calcutta. At that time, a very well-known um, drama director named Amritalal Bose came to his college to um, direct a drama on the life of Lord Chaitanya. And Mr. Bose asked a question. Why would anyone want to come to see our drama you're just amateur young boys, <laughs> students. <laughs> when there are professionals performing Lord Chaitanya's plays all around Calcutta. And then he said, because anyone who sees a sincere performance of Lord Chaitanya will be free of sins. That is why we are doing it. They diligently practiced and rehearsed for one year. Mr. Bose said that he would not allow them to, to perform even once until he considered that it was perfect. After that year, they performed one time. <laughs> Our beloved Srila Prabhupada, whose name was then Abhai Jaran, this is some years before he met his spiritual master. He was still a student. He took the role of Adoita Charya. And Srila Prabhupada later told us that everyone in the audience, upon seeing the performance, was crying. He said, because the performers were well-trained and sincere. Well-trained and sincere. <laughs> Um, through the Prabhupada, that was what he was always urging us to be, well-trained and sincere. Because if we present Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in that spirit, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will manifest through our words, through our actions to touch people's hearts. and transform their consciousness. It's very telling at that time, Srila Prabhupada was still a boy. He played the role of Adoitacharya. One of the primary reasons Lord Chaitanya descended to this world 
was the prayers and the tears that Advaita Charya offered in compassion to the fallen souls throughout the world. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita describes that all the devotees of the Navadvip area, this is before Lord Chaitanya's appearance, they would gather at the house of Advaita Prabhu. There, they were constantly immersed in association with one another. There was Srivas, Aridas Thakur, and so many others. They would have Harikata. They would discuss Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and have truly ecstatic kirtan. These are all great avatars and pure devotees of the Lord gathered together. The happiness they felt among one another at Adwaita's own house. And could you imagine the types of prasad they were to having at that time? It was filled with joy. But still, they were all feeling an intense sorrow due to their compassion to see the fallen souls all over the world without love for Krishna. This is a apparent contradiction that is so much at the very core of the heart of the principles of true bhakti. How can there be agony and ecstasy simultaneously? These devotees among each other, tasting the sweetness of the holy name and tasting Krishna's pastimes in Srimad Bhagavatam and the loving relationships they shared with one another was an unparalleled happiness. But when our happiness is the happiness of the soul, the soul's love for Krishna, then we see all living beings in relation to Krishna. And it's, it becomes intolerable to see anyone without that love for Krishna because we really care. It was at that time that Advaita Charya on the bank of Mother Ganga performed puja. He was offering Tulsi leaves and Tulsi manjuris and the water of the Ganges to Krishna, begging for Krishna to come to this world to deliver pure devotional service, prema bhakti, to the fallen, unqualified people of this world in Kali Yuga. Incessant Tears of compassion were shed from his eyes. From his heart, he was crying for you and me. As he was offering his prayers of compassion, Aridas Thakur was chanting his japa 300,000 names every day, crying for Krishna to come to this world to deliver the fallen souls. 
Srivas Thakur and his brothers, they were having kirtan practically constantly praying for Krishna to come to this world <laughs> to bring compassion to the people of this age of Kali. This is the characteristic that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed in his own life and in the life of all of his devotees. This is the standard that he is begging and pleading each and every one of us to emulate. Deep attachment to Krishna to his holy names and to the association of devotees and a deep compassion for those who are suffering in this world. Many times, according to Srila Brindavan Das Thakur and Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he, he proclaimed that I appeared in this world. I incarnated because of the compassionate love of Adwaitacharya for all the fallen souls. When Srila Prabhupada was a student, he played according to the Srila Prabhupada Lilamrita, this was the first and last drama that Prabhupada had ever performed. <laughs> and he played the role of Adwaitacharya. And how throughout the rest of his life, that spirit of the compassion of Adoita was personified. Why did Srila Prabhupada come to the West? He was 69 years old, living in Vrindavan. It was the instruction of his spiritual master when Srila Prabhupada was on Jaladuta, he wrote one entry in his diary. I am so far from my home in Vrindavan. My only solace is the nectar of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. This is after his heart attacks and everything. On this impossible mission, he said, to spread the glories of Lord Chaitanya all over the world, in the Western world, in the English language, he has left his home. But Srila Prabhupada explained, I'm very happy because this is the will of my guru and this is the prophecy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu. Srila Prabhupada's compassion for us to spread the mercy of Lord Chaitanya to the whole world. That is something that we must always keep in the forefront of our spiritual lives. If we truly want to offer our gratitude to Krishna. Mad Bhakta Puja Pyadika.
Krishna is most pleased when we honor those who love him. And especially those who are willing to sacrifice their lives to be instrument of his compassion. Let us begin today's Gaur Purnima with this meditation. And in order to truly show our gratitude to Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda through Srila Prabhupada, we must appreciate, recognize, and help one another uplift each other as devotees of the Lord. This is the very culture that Lord Chaitanya and all of his associates have demonstrated to us. Srila Prabhupada often cited how Prahlad Maharaj, he, he proclaimed that in the age of Kali, the Lord will come in a covered incarnation. In other words, he will come in the role of a devotee to teach us how to be devotees. In the Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Atwapa Yuga, the Lord appears in many ways as the Supreme Personality of Godhead to demonstrate his, his, his all opulent pastimes to attract our hearts. In Kali Yuga, people are so unqualified. That the Lord appears in the role of his own devotee to teach us how to be devotees by his own example. Krishna culminates in Gita Sarva Dharaman Parityasya Mame Kam Sharanam Bhirja Aham Tvam Sarva Papi Pyo Moksha Isha Mimasa Abandon all varieties of dharma and surrender to me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. But in this age, Krishna, in the mood of Sri Radha, <laughs> is manifesting supreme compassion. Not only to give the least fortunate the greatest fortune, to give the most undeserving, the greatest of all spiritual benedictions. And he comes to teach us through his words and his example. Srila Rupa Goswami prayed, Namo Mahabharanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate. Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gaudatvishe Namo. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the most munificent, most merciful of all incarnations. He's Krishna himself. Not only is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Krishna with all of his six opulences in full, but as we have read in the invocation verses, he is Krishna coming to give something the deepest, 
most profound revelation of love. Radha Bhavaduti Suvalitandomi Krishna Swarupa. Krishna knows everything. He knows everything past, present, and future. He knows every living being. He's within the, within the heart of everyone. As the Paramatma the karm of the cosmic manifestation, he's Karuna Dakshai Vishnu. And all the universes are manifested from him. Through his mere glance, he impregnates life within all species. <laughs> As Garabodakshai Vishnu, he's the Lord of every universe. And Akshirodakshai Vishnu, he's the Lord, the Paramatma within the heart of every being. He knows everything. And he never forgets. There's nothing that the Lord does not see and hear. An awareness of this is Krishna consciousness. There's nowhere we can hide from the Lord because he's in and between every atom and he's within our hearts. But Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami tells that there's one thing that the Lord wants to know. What is the nature of Srimati Radharani's love? What is the happiness she feels when she experiences his love? What is it about him? that makes her so happy that he cannot even calculate her happiness. Krishna comes as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with the Mahabhav, the love of Sri Radha and her munificent, magnificent golden complexion which radiates her love. And it is in this form that the Lord assumes the role of a devotee in the age of Kali Yuga to beg the suffering conditioned souls to receive his mercy. The Panchatattva Lord Chaitanya and his associates, it is described, they broke open the treasure house of love of God. They tasted the contents through the congregational chanting of the holy names and Harikata. And they distributed that contents without considering who is fit or unfit, without considering which place is auspicious or inauspicious, what time is auspicious or inauspicious. It is for this reason that the Srimad Bhagavatam describes the pitfalls, the sufferings, the horrible conditions of Kali Yuga. But this description culminates by telling that the great saints and sages they worship Kali Yuga as the best of all ages because it is in this age 
that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has appeared to manifest the Harinam Sankirtan movement. Param Virjayate Sri Krishna Sankirtan, the prime benediction for all humanity at large. It's human nature. Unless we understand the value of something, we will not really strive and make sacrifices to attain it. And if we receive it, we will not really protect it. <laughs> So it is all important for us on this day of Gaur Purnima to deeply contemplate, meditate, and appreciate the value of the gift that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates are giving to us. In the role of a devotee, and sometimes manifesting himself as the supreme absolute truth, the personality of Godhead, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu delivered countless conditioned souls. And our beloved Srila Prabhupada and all of our acharyas, in their faith, they understand that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is forever present whenever and wherever we take shelter of his mercy. Let us just for a few moments examine some of the extraordinary different types of persons Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestowed this highest gift of the love of Vrindavan and how he did it. In Navadweep, There was a simple maid servant lady named Duki. <laughs> um, it doesn't describe anything about her being very educated. She just did the most menial service. During the Mahaprakash Leela at the house of Srivas, The great devotees like Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Prabhu, Gadadhar Prabhu, Srivas, they were offering an Abhishekam to Lord Chaitanya. It was one of those rare, rare moments where he agreed to sit on the throne of Vishnu and accept their worship. Duki. almost invisible to everyone. She was just in the background. She would take clay pots, run to the Ganges, fill them with water, and then bring them and just put them on the floor. And then the devotees would pick them up and pass them up to the devotees who were bathing Lord Chaitanya. She was completely unnoticed. Not trying to be in the forefront. Not trying to attract Lord Chaitanya's attention by, um, <laughs> by standing right in front of him or doing anything great like that. 
but she valued the greatness of all the devotees. And she simply wanted to be the servant of the servant of the servant of all those devotees. And who in the audience today cannot fill a pot with water and put it on the floor? <laughs> That's all she was doing. But what was in her heart? She had such an appreciation that she wanted to just assist the devotees of the devotees of the devotees in giving the service to Lord Chaitanya. And as everyone was looking at Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's beautiful golden form being bathed and being offered beautiful garlands and wonderful kirtan, Lord Chaitanya was looking at Duki. <laughs> he asked Srivas, who is this? Who is this lady? Srivas said, she's a simple maidservant. Her name is Duki. Mahaprabhu said, I do not approve of this name. From this day forward, her name will be Suki. Happy. And he gave her ecstatic love. He gave her Prema Bhakti. He gave her the love of the residents of Brindavan. Her realization, the gift of what she realized is probably far more than anyone that we know today. <laughs> that was Lord Chaitanya's mercy. He saw the intent of her heart. And during the Mahaprakash Leela where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was revealing the glories of all his devotees, he revealed to all of us her, own, her only real qualification was how much she appreciated the Vaishnavas and how much she wanted to just serve them, even way in the background. Srila Prabhupada would quote Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. Do not try to see Krishna, <laughs> but serve Krishna in such a way that Krishna is happy to see you. Lord Goranga, he taught us this lesson in this beautiful pastime. And then there's Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. He was very different than Dukhi. <laughs> Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was practically the greatest scholar on earth. He was one of the greatest teachers in Navadweep. And then he was invited by the king of Puri to Jagannath Puri. He was a guru for the king. He was such a scholar of the Vedas, an unparalleled scholar, although he was a grihasta. His practice of dharma, of piety, of puja, his knowledge of scriptures, the greatest pundits, sannyasis, they would come to study under Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya. How do you teach someone like that? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
he was only 24 years old at the time. He had just taken sannyas maybe a month before. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was a very elderly um, Brahman who was the most esteemed follower of Dharma in all of the kingdom, practically, of Puri. Lord Chaitanya He looked so innocent that Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya wanted to protect him. My child, <laughs> you're so young. How will you remain a sannyasi unless you really understand Vedanta? Lord Chaitanya said, please instruct me. Lord Chaitanya said to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, I accept you as my guru. <laughs> Please instruct me and protect me. And in this mood, he charmed the heart of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. And for many days in the Jagannath temple, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya instructed Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the knowledge and the science of Vedanta. And the Lord, Vedaishta Sarvera Hame Eva Vedyo Vedanta Krit Veda Vedeva Chaham. He's the compiler of Vedanta. Lord Chaitanya's plenary portion manifestation is, is Vyastev, the compiler of the Vedas. He's the knower of the Vedas. By all the Vedas, only he is to be known. But he's patiently, for over one week, he's learning, he's listening. And in this way, he engaged in Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya in service. <laughs> Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was serving Lord Chaitanya with a real care to help him, to protect him. And through that process, his heart was transformed. And after he completed an elaborate um, lesson, for many days, he said to Lord Chaitanya, you have not said anything. You're just sitting and hearing. Have you, I don't know if you've understood or not. Lord Chaitanya proclaimed him, you are my guru, you are my elder, you care about me. I'm so grateful to you. I understand Vedanta, but whatever you said was like a dark cloud over the brilliant sun of Vedanta. By this time, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya already had such love for Lord Chaitanya he was willing to hear Lord Chaitanya's explanation. First, Lord Chaitanya totally opened his heart by his humility, his compassion, his patience. <laughs> he prepared the heart of of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. So when he could speak, the great Bhattacharya would be completely transformed.
Yes, it was in Puri that Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya surrendered his life to Sri Sri Radha and Krishna and the path of pure devotional service. And the Lord revealed that he was Radha and Krishna himself. Manifested such a darshan to Sarvabhoma that Sar after Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya surrendered his life. When Lord, after delivering Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, the Lord announced that he was going to go to South India on a tour. Sarvabhoma said that while you're traveling in South India, please meet Ramananda Rai. I know him. I always thought he was a sentimentalist. Due to my pride of being such a great Vedantic scholar, I never could appreciate what he was teaching. But now that I have received your mercy, I can understand his supreme glories. You will be so happy if you meet with him. The Lord took his South India tour. There's a beautiful lesson in this incident that when we really receive the mercy of the Lord, then we can appreciate the bhakti of the Vaishnavas. If we cannot receive, if we cannot really appreciate whatever devotion a devotee may have, we should be praying and taking shelter of the holy names in Krishna. For their mercy, so that we can appreciate the glory of a Vaishnav. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in Sri Rangam, he came to that courtyard where the illiterate Brahmin was reading Bhagavad Gita every day. Um, he was among the greatest scholars of the world. And most of them were Vaishnav scholars too of the Sri Sampradaya. He would sit and read all the 18 chapters of Bhagavad Gita every day. He couldn't really understand what he was reading, literally, word for word. And he could not pronounce it correctly. No one paid him any attention. He was the least among everyone. But when Lord Chaitanya saw him, He saw tears in his eyes. Tears of love. Lord Chaitanya asked, what are you doing? He said, actually, I don't know how to read properly. I don't know how to recite properly. I don't even really know what it's saying. But my guru has told me that I must come here every day and read the entire Bhagavad Gita out loud. I'm just trying to please my spiritual master. That will to please his guru attracted Lord Chaitanya so deeply. He asked, if you don't understand, why are you crying? 
piece that I'm, as I'm reciting, I'm just seeing Krishna, Ushama Sundar. He's so beautiful. He's the Lord of all lords. And he's driving the chariot for Arjuna. <laughs> he's a servant of his own devotee. And in this mood, he's instructing Arjuna. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, you are the true knower of Bhagavad Gita. The Lord embraced him. And that benediction that Lord Chaitanya came to give to the world, that most priceless, precious, and rarest of all forms of love of God, he bestowed upon the Brahman. Srila Prabhupada often cited that story. And in relation to that, let us examine Keshav Kashmiri. <laughs> he was the most proud and arrogant scholar. He was Digvijay. He was the world champion in debate. He gained so much fame, so much power, and so much wealth by his debating. He would go from town to town, village to village, to challenge people in debates. He had an entourage. He would be carried in a beautiful palaquin. There would be Brahmins chanting around him. There would be musicians, and they would proclaim, the great Digvijay Pandit has come. Navadweep was the high seat of learning for all of India. In that sense, all the world. But all the great scholars of Navadweep, they were all hiding when Keshav Kashmiri came, because they knew that the heat, they didn't have a chance against him. He would pulverize anyone in debate. The goddess Saraswati personally spoke on his tongue whenever he spoke. At that time, Lord Chaitanya had not, he, his, he was Nimai Pandit. <laughs> he was, he had not even begun the Sankirtan movement yet. He was just a boy. <laughs> he was teaching grammar to some students. He spoke with such honor and respect for Keshav Kashmiri. He asked Keshav Kashmiri to recite a poem glorifying Mother Ganga. And he did it in such a way that all the assembled students were struck with wonder. They had never how to compose a hundred verses in perfect Sanskrit philosophically so pristine in glorification of Mother Ganga. It was humanly impossible. And Nimai, he said, this was very nice. Now, please explain the faults. of Kashmiri, there is no faults in whatever I say. And Lord Chaitanya pointed them out. For the first time in his life, Keshav Kashmiri, the greatest debater 
in the world. He was completely blank. He could not speak a single word. He had defeated the greatest scholars, the greatest pundits, the greatest yogis. And here's a boy who's just a grammar teacher. He was utterly defeated. The students started to laugh. And Nimai, he said, no, no, do not laugh. And again, he praised Keshav Kashmiri. He said, I think you're tired because you had just composed and recited such an incredible poem in glorification of Mother Ganga. Let us discuss this more tomorrow. That night, the goddess Saraswati appeared to him. He was crying. What have I done? What happened to me? At that time, the goddess came to him and told him that whatever knowledge I have given you, I have received from him. <laughs> he is the supreme personality of Godhead. He is Krishna. He is the source of Vishnu and all avatars. Go to him and surrender. He privately went to Lord Chaitanya and surrendered his life. Lord Chaitanya instructed him, do not tell anyone who I really am. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya gave him that same ecstatic love, the same gift of pure devotional service. On one hand, there's a poor, illiterate Brahmin just trying to, can't recite a single verse properly, just trying to please his guru. And on the other hand, there is Kesh of Kashmiri, the most learned person, full of arrogance. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave them both. the matchless gift of pure devotional service to Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he had that discussion with the Chandkazi in Navadweep. After he established the Sankirtan movement, at the beginning, he was just having kirtan with his most intimate, loving devotees in the house of Srivas. And then one day, to the innocent people of Navadweep, he gave them the simple instruction, always chant the names of Krishna. Chant Japa when you're alone. Have kirtan with your family. Chant the holy names when you're eating. Chant the holy names as far as possible when you're sleeping. Chant Hare Krishna when you are in your in, in your workplace. Always take the name of Krishna. You could chant with instruments. You can chant by clapping your hands. And just to please him, the simple people of Navadweep were chanting. But at that time, it was under Mughal rule and the Chankazi, he was actually a great scholar of the Holy Quran. And he was also... the head of the government, with military, with police. And they were persecuting the devotees, breaking murdungas, beating them, plundering them. Lord Chaitanya, he told the devotees of Navadweep and the common people, 
This evening, I will lead the kirtan right to Chan Kazi's house. And he did. It was the first public Nam Sankirtan of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Prabhupada explained hundreds and thousands of people gathered. And at night, they all lit torches. Everybody could see the beautiful form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing in ecstasy alongside Nityananda Prabhu and Gadadhar. There was Adoita and Srivas and Haridas. All the devotees were there in that kirtan. And when they ultimately, after going to all the bathing ghats and all the marketplaces of Navadvip, they culminated at the house of Chandkasi. And there, Chankazi, he came down, and Lord Chaitanya was so respectful. He said, you are like my own uncle. Why are you hiding from me? <laughs> Philosophically, he spoke to Chankazi in such a way with such respect that Chan Kasi surrendered his heart. He didn't externally change his religion. He remained the Chan Kasi. <laughs> but Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestowed upon him that same gift of ecstatic love for Krishna the love of Vrindavan. And after this glorious, Shankazi was living in a beautiful palace. <laughs> he was the government head. He was a scholar. He was very, very powerful. He was persecuting devotees. After this great victory, Lord Chaitanya went to the little straw hut of Kolavecha Sridhar. Yes, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in so many ways was giving his ecstatic love to whoever he would receive. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in Varanasi, he was leading kirtan among the common people, temple of Bindu Madhava. At that time, one of the most powerful and famous sannyasis and scholars in all the land was Prakashananda Saraswati. He had thousands of disciples, thousands of sannyasi disciples. Spiritually, he was like the ruler of Varanasi. And he had no appreciation for Lord Chaitanya. In fact, he was ridiculing him publicly. Lord Chaitanya came to a Brahmin's house for Prasad, and that Brahmin was crying, saying, this Prakashananda Saraswati, he's saying so many things against you, just calling you a sentimentalist and minimizing you in every way. It was actually breaking the hearts of the few devotees who were there. Lord Chaitanya, He was invited to an assembly where Prakashananda Saraswati was going to be with his followers. And he went. Here is the absolute truth. Narasingha Dev is a plenary portion of Lord Chaitanya. 
Lord Varahadev, Mahavishnu, Lord Ramchandra, Yet when he came into the assembly, he saw Prakasha and Saraswati with his followers on a raised platform. Lord Chaitanya sat on the ground at the place where all the sannyasis had already washed their feet. He sat in the foot wash area. Prakasananda Saraswati looked down at him. He saw he was so beautiful. <laughs> the Brahmani fulgence was emanating. But yet, why are you sitting there? He said, You are a sannyasi, you are in the Shankar Sampradaya also. Why are you sitting in that dirty place where we have washed our feet? Come and sit with us. Lord Goranga replied, You are all great scholars. I'm not fit to sit on the same platform as all of you. His humility, his compassion, his character melted the heart of Prakashananda Saraswati. And he came down himself because Lord Chaitanya was too humble to come up. And he personally took him by the hand and brought him to sit beside him. The Lord induced him to render service. <laughs> The Lord induced him to appreciate him. And in doing so, the Lord opened his heart. And when Prakashananda Saraswati challenged, why are you not studying Vedanta with us? Why are you among so many common sentimental people just chanting and dancing? That is no activity for a sannyasi. Lord Chaitanya said, my guru told me I'm a fool. <laughs> that there's no use in me trying to study Vedanta. I should just chant the names of Krishna. <laughs> and then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu proceeded to explain Vedanta from the perspective of the Vaishnav personal philosophy. When Prakashananda Saraswati and all of his followers heard this, they were completely transformed. Prakasananda Saraswati was the leader of the Mayavadis. The misconceptions that you can become God, that ultimately God is impersonal and formless. When God incarnates in this world, Bhagavan, his form, his pastimes, his names are ultimately maya, but they're a way of connecting us to purify our hearts so we can enter into the unmanifest, impersonal, all-pervading, supreme one truth. He was teaching the world this. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in that one day, he charmed the heart and spoke such a profound, inclusive philosophy that right in front of everybody's eyes, Prakashananda Saraswati accepted Krishna's eternal form. That the eternal nature of the living entity 
of the of the soul is that we are eternally servants of Krishna. And in the spiritual world beyond it, Brahma Jyoti, the Lord is performing his personal pastimes with his unlimited devotees, pastimes of pure love. The form of the Lord, the names of the Lord, the pastimes of the Lord are eternally real personal, and the highest truth. Yes, Prakashananda Saraswati surrendered, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave him that same gift of ecstatic love. Rataparudra Maharaj was the king of Odisha. What was the wealth in his treasury? He was undisputed king. Gajapati. He had armies. <laughs> he had palaces. Yet simply by associating with Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, who had become a devotee of the Lord, King Pratapurudra, understood Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's true identity. He was begging and pleading for the opportunity to be in the presence of Lord Chaitanya so he could surrender his life. Lord Chaitanya gave him that ecstatic love. And Prakashananda, I mean, King Prataparudra, he dedicated all of his wealth, everything he had in the service of Lord Chaitanya and the devotees. And then there was Suklambar Brahmachari. He was a very penniless beggar. <laughs> he would go house to house to beg. He had no wealth, no savings, no followers. Whether it was Suklambar Brahmachari or Maharaj Prataparudra, because they were willing to receive, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave them that treasure of love for Krishna. Gagai and Madhai. They were the least qualified. They were the worst among criminals. Even Yamaraj and his secretary Chitragupta could not calculate the sins, the crimes, and the pains that they were causing other people. When Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas Thakur saw Jagai and Madhaya and understood the, the way that they were living, they were thinking there is no people in creation as sinful as them. Let us give them Lord Chaitanya's mercy. For Jagai and Madhai, Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya, it was like together <laughs> they delivered Jagai and Madhai. After Madhai hit Lord Nityananda on the head with a pot with the intent to kill him and was about to hit him again, Lord Chaitanya appeared. There was no question of speaking philosophy with them. There was no question of sitting, you know, in a, where they wash their feet <laughs> and attracting their hearts. Out of his causes mercy, he understood exactly what they required. 
with eyes glowing with anger, the Lord's anger. He manifested his Sudarshan chakra and stood as death personified before them. That's what Jagai and Madhai needed to take him seriously. Still, that's not what transformed them. That was part of what transformed them. And as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was standing as death personified, and they understood in total fear that they were about to die, Nityananda Prabhu, he begged Lord Chaitanya to forgive them. The same Nityananda Prabhu who was hit on the head by Madhai and Lord Nityananda with all humility, he said, I don't mind that you hit me on the head. I don't mind that I'm covered with blood, but I do mind seeing the suffering of your life. Just take the name of Krishna. I forgive you. And he was still ready to hit him again. But when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested his anger, Madhai could, re could, could understand the mercy of Lord Nityananda. And Lord Chaitanya said, you have hurt Nityananda Prabhu. If he forgives you, I will give you ecstatic love for Krishna. Nityananda Prabhu picked him up and embraced him. And Lord Chaitanya gave Jagai and Madhai that same gift of ecstatic love. Jagai Madhai. And then there's Rupa and Sanatan. <laughs> Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami. They were multi billionaires, completely pious charitable, humble, respectful to all living beings. But they were trapped in a service for the Nawab Hussein Shah. Helping a tyrant rule his kingdom. Yet Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he took his kirtan all the way to Ramakali. It was actually out of the direction of where he was going to Brindavan. He went all the way to Ramakali simply to give his mercy to Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. Yes. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are just speaking from a tiny particle of one drop from the shoreless, bottomless ocean of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes of bestowing mercy and giving the gift of the love of Vrindavan to the people of this world. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so eager to empower his devotees. He empowered Nityananda Prabhu to travel throughout Bengal and deliver even the most fallen, the most unworthy. He empowered Haridas Thakur to be the Namacharya. The Acharya, the guru for the Yuga Dharma of the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Such a message. Haridas Thakur was born in a family of untouchables by the 
traditional society's calculation. Throughout his life, because of his lower birth, because he was from another, a, a, a family of another religion, he was persecuted. He was misunderstood. He was blasphemed his whole life. But Lord Chaitanya saw the sincerity and the devotion of his heart and empowered him for it to be a Namacharya. Even today, over 500 years later, every day at every temple throughout the world, we are saying, Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Mahaprabhu gave that title to Haridas. Namacharya. Ramananda Rai, when Lord Chaitanya met him, he was a government official. Nobody really understood. Some people considered him like a sudra, of, of, you know, of, of, in the sense of um, not being of a respectable community. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he sat and received instructions on the highest truths of Prema Bhakti from Ramanandarai and established him as the supreme knower of Rasa Bhakti. The six Goswamis, Srila Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, and Jiva Goswami. Lord Chaitanya empowered them to write literatures. Besides the Shikshastakam, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu really didn't write anything and leave for us. but he empowered the six Goswami to write these literatures. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his whole life to, he's, he's Krishna with the love of Radha coming to bring the gopis' love for Krishna to this world. He empowered the six Goswamis, his devotees, to reveal Vrindavan to the world. And when we study Sri Chaitanya Mangala, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. These scriptures are the revelation of the conclusions of the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. We find how the Lord has revealed devotee communities. What are the devotees respect, honor, and love for each other? And there are so many instances, even devotees who who, who, who make mistakes. who are fallen, how the devotee community is there to uplift each other. When Srila Prabhupada stated in Vrindavan during his last pastime that you can show your love for me by how you cooperate together to spread this mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu,
that idea of cooperating isn't like a mundane way of, you know, governments trying to cooperate with each other <laughs> and tolerate each other. Srila Prabhupada is actually giving us the key to enter into the spirit of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Because this type of cooperation requires relating to one another on this higher platform of what pleases our Guru and Krishna. the Prabhupada sometimes when devotees would neglect each other he said I have shed buckets of blood for every devotee that comes to this movement with that understanding that is how you should relate to one another That is Lord Chaitanya's Leela. Of course, among ourselves, we don't have Narada Munis and, <laughs> and Lalitas and Vishakas and Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So many of his devotees were eternal associates that came from Goloka Vrindavan, Murari Guptas, Hanumanji. <laughs> But they all played the role of devotees to demonstrate how we're supposed to relate to one another with this higher principle of Krishna consciousness. Or Purnima, we are celebrating Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. In Sri Mayapur Dham, in the land of Navadweep, where Lord Chaitanya appeared and established a Sankirtan movement, our beloved founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada established his international headquarters. He named the temple the Mayapur Chandrodaya Mandir. And this, this word Chandrodaya is very much revealed by Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. He describes Lord Chaitanya as the moon of Navadweep that rose, the rising moon of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to give light to the world. And after glorifying Lord Chaitanya in this way, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami describes the devotees of the Lord as Chandragana, the many moons who have also risen <laughs> to give light to the world. And Srila Prabhupada describes that just as the sun gives light to the full moon to illuminate the night. The son of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is reflecting upon the full moons of all the devotees, those sincere devotees who are giving their lives. And each of these devotees is giving light in this dark age of Kali.
Srila Prabhupada established a Mayapur Chandrajaya Mandir in a little rice paddy. <laughs> it began as a straw hut. And Srila Prabhupada, his movement was quite small at the time too. Compared to today, we can't even calculate. He invited his devotees to come for Gaur Purnima. And the first festival, I don't remember the number of perhaps a hundred devotees from all over the world came to, to celebrate with him. And gradually more and more. And Srila Prabhupada would sometimes look at the birthplace, the Yoga Pita and said, that is the place Lord Chaitanya appeared, his birthplace. The Mayapur Chandra Dayamand here is place of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastime of preaching to the world. Yes. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the age of Kali, a time when Srila Prabhupada explains it this way, that in every age there's demoniac people, there's sinful activities, there's ignorance, But in Kali Yuga, it is amplified by millions of times. All of these, what is what is dark spots in other ages becomes the entire age of Kali Yuga. And when we look at society today, how materialistic people are, how inclined people are to criticize, to be envious, to gossip. And we see those tendencies in ourselves. The age of quarrel and hypocrisy are for no, for no justified reason we're willing to fight we're willing to blaspheme we're willing to declare wars such a fallen age Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur said when you forget your original Krishna consciousness you're vulnerable for all these things the solution is to be Krishna conscious. What does it mean to be Krishna conscious? Samsidhir Haditoshana. I'm an eternal servant of Krishna. The value of my life is how I please Krishna. In this age, Lord Shaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the easiest process, chanting the names of God. Nam Nam Akari Bahuta Nija Sarva Shakti. And there are many names of God. Just chant the names of God. Have kirtan, dance. <laughs> Chant, dance, and be happy. Such a simple process. Whether one is the greatest scholar like Prakashananda or Sarvabhoma, or whether one is illiterate like Dukhi, whether one has the wealth of Prataparudra, or whether one is penniless like Sukhumbara, or Kolavecha, Sridhar. 
whether the whether one is the most esteemed Brahmin like Tapan Mishra, or whether one is seen by society as an outcast like Haridas. We all have, we are all qualified to receive Lord Chaitanya's gift if we sincerely receive it by following. Chant the holy names of the Lord. Learn how to properly associate with devotees and serve devotees. According to our capacity to read Srila Prabhupada books, our Vedic literatures, and learn them. Live a pure life. Simple, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no gambling. Stop criticizing. Stop gossiping. Compared to what in previous ages? Just to get some yogic powers compared to what one had to do to do that. This is so simple. It is so easy. And yet, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give us ecstatic love for Krishna, prema bhakti, and entrance into the eternal abode of Vrindavan. But yet, even the easiest things are so difficult for us. That is the testimony of how merciful the Lord is. <laughs> On behalf of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, Srila Prabhupada, he asked us to sincerely receive what he has given us on behalf of our parampara by following and to share that with one another and to share it with the world. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu described himself as a seller of the fruits of love of God. He said, I only have two hands and I have millions and millions, countless fruits I want to distribute to everyone. I'm asking my devotees to assist me in distributing these fruits. Srila Prabhupada, he has come to give all of us this opportunity. In this world, because people are lost in illusion, they take mundane accomplishments to be exalted. But for a devotee, what is the most exalted? Who is the most exalted and what is the most exalted thing to do? to receive the fruits of Krishna Prema from Lord Chaitanya and to assist him in distributing those fruits. There is nothing more exalted than that. Whatever our position, whatever our background, whatever our nationality, whatever our sex, whatever our race, even whatever we may have done previously in our lifetimes or previous lifetimes. If we're willing to live in the spirit of Srila Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda's compassion by receiving this fruit of love of God through the holy name and Vaishnav culture and assist them in sharing with one another and distributing to the world, there is nothing so exalted as that.
to be great is not great. To assist those who are great by serving them, to appreciating them, and reciprocating, that is greatness. And this day, the full moon night of the month of Palguna, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended to perform his eternal pastimes, to reveal to the world his eternal instructions. And I'm and this little screen that's in front of me through the Zoom technology, I'm seeing so many hundreds of devotees gathered in the temple room of Sri Sri Radha Gopinath. And how fortunate we are. We gather together on Gaur Purnima to celebrate the Lord's mercy. On this day, let us pray to Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees that we could honestly and sincerely dedicate our lives to expressing our gratitude to him. Rinara pisuni chena taror iva sehishnana amani namana dena kirtaniya sadahari. Emulating these principles of being humble like a blade of grass, tolerant and forgiving like a tree, not demanding respect, but eager to offer respect to others. We pray to emulate these qualities so that we could chant the holy names in a way that will please our gurus and goranga. And we can be such a community like that reflecting the moon of Mahaprabhu's mercy to give light to all of Bombay, to all of India, to all of the world, to all of the universe. That is not within our capacity but it is within our capacity to allow the Supreme Lord to do that through us. <laughs> that is humility. That is surrender. That is a meaning of Gaur Purnima. Let us pray. I believe at this time, one very exalted devotee, His Holiness Kadambakanana Swami Maharaj, who's given his life and soul, disciple of Jayadoita Swami Maharaj, disciple of Srila Prabhupada, he traveled the world giving this um, gift of Lord Chaitanya. And I believe he's now in his final days in Brindaban, soon to leave us. To appreciate those who have given their lives. And I recently spoke with Nanda Maharaj in Belgaum. He's also in the path of departing from this world toward Krishna. 
when we see devotees who have really given their lives, some grihastas, some sannyasis, some raising families to serve this great mission of Lord Chaitanya, and some renouncing everything of this world and traveling the world. Let us pray. Pray for them, which is what they would want us to do. And pray that we can truly be grateful to those who have given their lives. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Lord Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. Bansha Kalpa Tarubyas Chakri Pasindu Bhyayiva Chapati Tanam Bhavani Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namona. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for taking your very Hare Krishna, time. Krishna Nam Prabhu, I miss you so much. I'm so happy to see you. And I'm seeing Vrishabhanu Prabhu, Hare Krishna, Sri Dhamasaka Prabhu. <laughs> Hare Hare. Thank Shri you, Maharaj. Maharaj. Thank you. Really grateful that in Chicago it's 10.30 at night and you have taken your valuable time to actually, be with all of us. Actually, it's 10 minutes to 11. <laughs> if my class was more spaced out than usual, that's that might be part of the influence that I'm... <laughs> I'm not accustomed to giving classes at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj, for giving us this essence of Gaur Leela, which is taking care of devotees. So many different pastimes were narrated, and <clears throat> it's very, very important for us, particularly on this very auspicious day, to remember how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us such immense wealth of the ability to practice Krishna consciousness. Grateful to you, Maharaj. Now I request uh, Baldev Prabhu to come and make an announcement as uh, traditionally this is the day when we make several announcements for the upcoming year. So, Baldev Prabhu. Hare Krishna, just making these announcements on the behalf of the Yatra Committee. So, so finally the long wait is over. So many queries, so many questions kept coming. Is the Yatra is going to happen or not? So yes, this year the Karthik Yatra will happen. And uh, His Holiness Radhana Swami Maharaj and all the devotees will go to Jagannath Puri Dham. <laughs> the dates of the Yatra are still, uh, we are working on that. And within 15-20 days, we will come back to you. So, thank you, Maharaj, for uh, helping us making this annou announcement because all the devotees are waiting here. Hare Krishna. Actually, if I can say something, can you hear me? 
Yes, Maharaj, we can hear you. Um, the Yatra team suggested Jagannath Puri of all places for various reasons. One is they were thinking that Kartik and Vrindavan, there will be so many people and they probably already booked out so many that there wouldn't be space for us. And Mayapur also, there's no space for us because it's too late for next Kartik. So they decided Puri. And I was so happy because it's so appropriate that we haven't had a Yatra in a couple years. And actually, when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left for his South Indian tour, it was a couple years. He didn't see any devotees. And all the devotees came to Jagannath Puri to see Lord Chaitanya after so many years of separation. <laughs> so we've been separated from each other on Yatra. So Puri is the perfect place for us to come together and have reunion, following in the footsteps of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thank you. Thank you very much, Baldiya Prabhu. So we will continue with the Gaur Katha till 12, 12, 15. So I now request Baldiya Prabhu to kindly come and continue with the Gaur Katha. Hare Krishna. I'm sorry. First, we are going to have the Sachi Sushashya come. And then after that, Baldiya Prabhu will render the Gaur Katha. Hare Krishna. So there's another very wonderful announcement from Sridha Mayapur. So we are having the grand opening festival for the Theo VP, the Temple of Vedic Planetarium, in the end of 2024. And for that, Radha Madhav, Panchatattva, Narsim Dev, and along with the 15 new Sampradaya Acharya Murtis will be moving there. And for that, the Theo VP is going to offer 31 beautiful ornate DT outfits and the wonderful opportunity for us is that Radha Gopinath Mandir has committed for two DT outfits for all of them and we invite all the devotees, well-wishers, friends to contribute. So one of the dress estimated cost is 16 lakh or US dollar 20,000. So this is a great wonderful blessing on this holy day that we can contribute to this wonderful seva. So we devotees can contact the path department for this seva. Hare Krishna. Shri Mayapur Dham Ki Jai. Krishna, much would you like to lead the Kirtan? Or is... <laughs> um, I guess Lord Chaitanya would have all night Kirtans. So... <laughs> um, a few minutes, if you like. There you go. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Asyatya de Satharine
ಗೌರವಾನಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭುನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯತ ಕಾಧಾರೀವಾಧಿ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಪ್ರಿಯದ್ವೈತ ಜಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭುನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯತ್ವೈತ ಕಾಧಾರೀವಾಧಿ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಚೈತನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೈತ ಗಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭುನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೈತ ಕಾಧಾರೀವಾಧಿ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಪ್ರಿಯದ್ವೈತ ಜಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭುನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೈತ ಕಾಧಾರೀವಾಧಿ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಬಹುನಿತನಾದ ಪ್ರಿಯದ್ವೈತ ಜಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭುನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೈತ ಕಾಧಾರೀವಾಧಿ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಪ್ರಿಯದ್ವೈತ ಗಾಧಾರೀವಾಧಿ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 
クリシナクリシナハリハリハリラーマハリラーマラーマラーマハリハリハリクリシナハリクリシナクリシナクリシナハリハリハリラーマハリラーマハリクリシナハリクリシナクリシナクリシナハリハリハリラーマハリラーマラーマラーマハリハリクリスナクリスナレハレハレラマレラマラマラマハリクリシナハリクリシナクリシナクリシナハリハリハリラーマハリラーマラーマラーマハリハリハリクリシナクリシナクリシナハリハリハレラマハレラマハマラマハレハレハリクリシナハリクリシナクリシナクリシナハリハリハリラマハリラマラマラマハリハリハリクリシナハリクリシナクリシナクリシナハリハリハリラマハリラマラマラマハリハリクリシナハリクリシナクリシナクリシナハリハリハリラーマハリラーマラーマラーマハリハリハリクリシナハリクリシナクリシナクリシナハリハリハリラーマハリラーマラーマラーマハリクリシナハリクリシナクリシナクリシナハリハリハリラーマーハリラーマーラーマーラーマーハリーハリーハリクリスナーハリクリスナーハリクリスナーハリハリーハリーハリーハリーハリーハリーハリクリシナハリクリシナクリシナクリシナハリハリハリラーマハリラーマラーマラーマハリハリジャイアジャイアプラブパーパブパーパブパーパブパーパブパーパブパーパブパーパブパーパブパーニタイゴーラハリーボーハリーボーハリーボーハリーボーハリーボーハリーボーハリーボーハリーボーハリーボーハリピーナタラーデピーナタラーデバンシャカルパタルビアスチャークリパーシンドビアエヴァチャーパティタナムパーバネビアオバイシナベビアオナモナマ
Thank you very much.